I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. Looking at the geological record, we don't think we've had CO2 levels this high for about five million years. So we really don't know what to expect into the future. We're, um, uh, we are in uncharted territory. Mr Speaker, this declaration is an acknowledgement of the next generation, an acknowledgement of the burden that they will carry if we do not get this right and if we do not take action now. Today we draw the line! People are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. But extremes of weather, made worse by climate change, have left the world in a climate emergency. Greenhouse gas levels in 2020 surged. In fact, levels of carbon dioxide are at the highest they've been in 3.6 million years. Record-breaking temperatures, raging wildfires and devastating flooding, all just a taste of what could happen in a worsening climate crisis. The landmark report from climate scientists is sobering, and it's a reality check for humans to act now. No further delays. It's time for emissions to be cut even further. We've got a 10-year window, and this window is absolutely crucial. Carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere was measured at a record high of 415 parts per million. Data from the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii says the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has reached levels never seen in the entirety of human existence. I think the bottom line is that we're not going to get a control on this unless we curtail fossil fuel burning. That's the real bottom line. climate comes down to a single number. The concentration of carbon in our atmosphere. We now understand this problem. We know how to stop the number rising and put it in reverse. We're going to have to learn together how to achieve this, ensuring none are left behind. We must use this opportunity to create a more equal world. And our motivation should not be fear, but hope. Perhaps the fact that the people most affected by climate change are no longer some imagined future generation, but young people alive today, perhaps that will give us the impetus we need to rewrite our story. We have not borrowed our children's future. We have stolen it and we're still stealing it now. And it's time we get together, whatever our religion, whatever our culture, get together and start changing our attitude so that we can leave a better world for our children whom we love.